All right guys, so I'm gonna be taking you along on a run and gun music video. Now the artists did insist that they wanted something very simple, very clean, and just kind of sticking it more so to performance scenes. So throughout this whole music video, I'm really just focusing on performance scenes and I just barely sprinkled in a little bit of B-roll shots here and there. I'm gonna be simplifying music videos for you guys using three cost-effective techniques that you can use whether you use a cell phone to shoot music videos or a mirrorless camera. So camera gear that we're using for today, Lumix S1 with a 35 mil ND filter and a wide angle lens, Turkina 11 to 20. We're gonna keep it simple today, not even using a gimbal. I think this music video is gonna be super dope. I keep saying dope in my videos yeah, and yeah. somebody's like, dude, who the fuck says dope? It's 2022. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, okay, thanks. Like, call yeah, me a fucking yeah, boomer. Fuck so I have a JBL clip uh, Bluetooth speaker I picked up for like, I don't know, 60 bucks. And I'm gonna be rocking the 35 mil. We're gonna get a quick performance scene. I'm gonna get Dawson just to run the song from very beginning to very end. I do this for every single performance scene. Reason being is so I have more footage to play around with and not enough. I'm probably gonna keep the IBIS on on the Lumix S1 and we're just gonna get some shots of Doss on the side of the car here. After that, we're gonna get more of a wider shot, and then we're gonna go into the next scene. I was always with the dollars in the freaks, motherfucker. I ain't never had no love. Show me I ain't none of the lucks. Let them know I need Benji's. Watch your sucker wearing off Fendi. I said, baby girl, come and ball with me. Remy sipping that she fall with me. I got semi slipping if they were ready. All right, so handheld shots with a 35 millimeter focal length. 35 millimeters, I feel, is just the perfect focal length to have in your camera bag. I feel that you can still get wider shots. You can get the medium focal length shots. And if you're using a prime lens, 35 millimeter primes, especially at f1.4, are super, super sharp lenses. And not only that, but they're really great for low light shooting, which in this music video, we shot during the daytime, so it doesn't really matter. But if you do own an f1.4, 35 mil, not only is your lens gonna be super sharp, it's gonna have great autofocus if you have a good autofocus camera, and it's gonna be great for low light. I think that a 35 millimeter focal length or lens should be the first camera lens that you invest in. All right guys, so next scene we're gonna swap to a wide angle, the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter. It's a super affordable, cheap lens. I think it's super sharp, it's f2.8. And I'm gonna be wide on Dawson while he's just kind of hanging out of the car. And I'm just gonna be getting these like, IBIS shots with the in-body image stabilization turned on and I'm just pushing in and out and I'm literally just cradling the camera like this. It's all handheld footage and if your camera has IBIS, you can get some pretty clean shots. Now keep in mind that just because you have IBIS doesn't mean that you can just, you know, whip the camera all over the place. It might get a little wobbly, so you still have to be stable. So whether that's me hugging my elbows into my sides and I'm twisting the camera like so, this is one of my favorite shots to get handheld, especially with a wide angle. And when I'm even stepping, I'm going heel to toe and toe to heel when I'm backing out. So just something to be mindful of when you are shooting handheld shots. And I'm gonna lay over all those shots right now let them know i need benji's while she sucker wearing off fendi i said baby girl come and ball with me when me sipping that she fall with me i got semi slipping if they were ready it's perfect everybody hurt come by my side show you what you were send it fuck church i'ma pray to god to live with other side need me a boss like queen minaj like been a lot all right so technique number two we have handheld shots with a wide angle lens now again whether you only own a kit lens or maybe you own an iphone 10 11 12 or 13, um, you can also shoot in a wide angle mode. However, shooting with a 35 millimeter as well as a wide angle mixes up your focal lengths a little bit and adds a little bit more of a dynamic image to your videos. Because if you think about it, if you're shooting with a 35 millimeter the entire time, yes, you can pull it off, but again, you're still getting that exact same focal length every time, so it is nice to switch it up, and in my opinion, it's way better to go wider if you do have that 24 to 35 millimeter focal length, rather than going to like a 70 millimeter or 100 millimeter or even more than that, as in my opinion, that's just way too punched in from music videos. All right, so we're gonna swap back to the 35 millimeter for one last performance scene. So I'm basically just gonna be shooting at f1.4, so blur out the background like crazy because there's a lot of stuff in the background we don't want to see and all I'm gonna do is just shoot through the wind or the side window of the car we're gonna roll it down and I'm just cradling the camera back and forth just shooting Dawson doing a performance scene Bitch, thought she really had it. I was always with the dollars in the freaks Motherfucker, I ain't never had no love show me I ain't none I'm in love with the streets everybody changed when I got what I usually tell artists when I'm shooting b-roll shots is I mean this is Dawson's first music video and especially when I'm shooting people where it's their first music video I tell them like 
I'm gonna play the song just to vibe to it. And if it feels awkward, sing along to the song. If it doesn't feel awkward, then just totally just vibe. You can be nodding your head, you can be giving me some hand movements. Just try to give me some sort of energy to use because we are going to be filming in 60 FPS, which is slow motion. Slower, just slow it down. Bitch, thought she really had the dollars. was always with the dollars and the freaks, mom. Motherfucker, I ain't never had no love. Show me I ain't none. I'm in love with the streets. Everybody. All right, so locations. Now, again, this is a running gun budget music video. So we kept it to three locations. Now, whenever you are shooting a music video, I always recommend that you choose at least two to three locations to shoot your music video because it just gives you enough footage to play around with in different environments. Now, for me personally, sourcing locations is the most annoying part for me because it's really difficult when you've been shooting music videos for a while to find the perfect outdoor location that you haven't used in the past. And second, sourcing indoor locations can be a little difficult because a lot of the time you do need extra budget. So for this music video, we shot all outdoors because it is free. Now I will say if you do want to learn about location scouting, I do have a very in-depth video found within my online music video course that was built for freelancers. This music video course again has that location scouting video in there as well as 150 plus other music video tutorials built for freelancers that will not break the bank. If you guys want to learn more about my music video course, click the first link that you see in the description of this video. Tripod shots, arguably the most overlooked camera shooting technique for music videos, and they are actually used a lot in really high budget music videos. And to achieve a really good tripod shot, simply all you wanna be doing is making sure that you are composing your shot. So in this shot, obviously we're using the trees as the background and I'm actually pointing up at the artist, which I'm gonna explain why when we're back on set. Just got a little Benro tripod here with a fluid head. I'm gonna mount the S1 with a wide angle on it. And we're gonna get like that old school hip hop type vibe, uh, which I really like. You see this in a lot of Cole Bennett videos actually, where it's just a tri simple tripod shot pointing up at the artist or looking up at the artist. The reason why we do these shots is it makes the artist look higher than life. So because he's wrapping down at the viewer, that's kind of the purpose, psychology, I guess you could call it, um, behind this type of shot. So I'm gonna mount this onto the tripod and I'm gonna place Dawson in a spot where he actually will have the sun behind him. So we're gonna be looking up at the sun and whenever he moves to the left or right, we're gonna get a little bit of a sun flare. So just kind of using our natural environment to our advantage here. So your feet are gonna stay planted there. If okay. you're gonna do anything, it's just gonna be kind of swaying back. Just swaying like this? Exactly, okay. yeah. So yeah, like really aggressive with like, communicating to the camera okay. so like you can get up like real close if you want to please let them know i need benji's watch you suck wearing off fendi i said get the girl coming by with me with me sipping and she fall with me i got semi slipping if they wore ready four homies in a north chevy as my poor heavy yeah i dig that a lot so i got love if i got lust if i got riches up in our hole cause my bitch thought she really had it i was always with the dollars and the freaks motherfucker i ain't never had no love show me i ain't none i'm in love with this now in the second tripod shot that i took i actually didn't really necessarily compose my shot with any sort of background but I took full advantage of my 35 millimeter prime lens at f1.4 I shot at f1.4 and purposely blurred out the background so let's say you're on set you don't know how to properly compose a shot for an environment you're in simply just stop down to the lowest f-stop possible and try to blur out the background so that there's just less noise in the background and by noise I mean just random things going on whether there's cars parked or random trees random buildings and you just want to blur that out so that the main focus is on the artist and nothing else in the background try to shoot at f-stops such as f1.4 f1.8 or f2.8 anything more than f2.8 you're really not going to get that nice creamy bokeh in the background somebody tell doja cat that i'm trying to indulge in that we don't need no trojan pack hey. i'm going messy i've been fucking bitches out in spain if i make it rain she gonna say my name hotline bling see the phone ring always in the swapped over to the wide angle here i have a polar pro nd filter but it's a six to nine stop so even at like the six stop it's way too dark like i'm pumping my iso to like 8,000 on this thing so we're gonna take it off we're gonna shoot 4k 
60 FPS. I might use some of this as slow motion. We'll see kind of what the vibe is when I'm editing, but when I'm shooting at one over 125 shutter speed and like F 2.8, it's way too blown out. So what I'm doing is because I'm shooting in 60 FPS, I'm doubling from 125 shutter uh, to 50. So, and then my aperture, I'm just gonna set it at F 5.0. So like everything's gonna kind of be in focus. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna slightly tilt the camera sideways like this. So this is called like a Dutch angle. So like this is a regular camera angle right now. And then I just slightly, tilt the camera over and give it a dutch angle and you get a whole different vibe and all i'm doing is literally just tilting the camera by like 45 degrees so yeah we're gonna run a little dutch angle for of dawson in the front seat he's gonna be looking back at the camera we're gonna drive the car and get a little performance scene bitches always gonna be looking for dollars in pockets they never had pussy always stay wetter when treasure lasts fall in love with a free bitch now I have two bonus tips for you guys, and the first one is gonna be an on-set tip. So right here, I have a JBL Bluetooth speaker. I bought this for about $60 at London Drugs. Now, Bluetooth speaker is so important because when the artist is singing along to the song, you're gonna actually be playing the song through a Bluetooth speaker so they can sing along with the song, and that is what is called a performance scene. Now, a little pro tip, if you don't have a massive speaker on set and you only have a small JBL speaker like this one, then you're gonna wanna keep this speaker as close to the camera as possible. And what this does is when you go to auto sync your clips that you've shot on set of all your performance scenes in your editing program with the mastered audio of the track, it's gonna be a lot easier for your editing program to auto sync all of the clips within your multicam clip because the editing program could actually hear the beat drops and the whole song really clearly. And it's just gonna make for a much easier edit and you're not gonna have to manually sync anything in post. Now, real quick editing technique, and this is something that you probably noticed within the footage and might have a question about, but when I was showcasing all of the tripod shots that I captured on this music video set, did you notice that there was a little bit of a handheld effect as well as the image zooming in and out? So the image zooming in and out is actually called keyframing. So when I was actually on set, I wasn't manually pulling the focal ring on the camera to punch in and out on the zoom. I was actually just doing it in post and this is what's called a keyframe. So you can set different points in your editing program to punch in and punch out. And if you guys want a keyframing tutorial, let me know in the comments down below. I can make one for Final Cut Pro 10. And last but not least, we have the handheld shake effect. Now I edited this video in Final Cut Pro 10 and I just used the handheld effect in the effects tab and you can actually adjust the shakiness of the handheld effect in post. So when you combine a keyframe in with the handheld shake effect or keyframe out with a handheld shake effect. It just looks way more better than just having a very stable tripod shot, which can still look good, but I really like to put a little bit of movement in my tripod shots. Again, I do dumb things down even more on my online music video course, and I take you step by step through every single thing you need to know about freelance filmmaking. We're not using you know, cinema cameras. We're not using super expensive gear. Try to keep everything as budget friendly as possible. Again, if you guys want to check that out, click the link in the description of this video. So with all that being said, guys, thank you everybody for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.